Living with my mother-in-law has been nothing short of a nightmare. She's constantly belittling me, dismissing me as a failure just because I'm a high school dropout. You can't do anything but cook, she often scoffs. Why do you make such a mess of the room? Her harsh criticisms are relentless and she doesn't hesitate to barge into our bedroom, rifling through closets and drawers. Hurling insults my way. It's as if my lack of formal education is all the excuse she needs to demean me. Despite her constant jabs, I can't argue back. My life has been overshed out by her disdain since the day I married her son. My name is Sophia, and my parents run a modest but well-loved restaurant. My father, a dedicated chef, and my mother, who handles the front of the house with charm and efficiency, have created a warm, bustling eatery. Although our restaurant is a bit dated and located far from the city center, it's known for its excellent food and service. Growing up as an only child, I admired my parents and dreamed of taking over the family business. I began working at the restaurant from a young age, and after graduating middle school, I dedicated myself to helping more, especially as my father's health began to decline. My father taught me the basics of cooking, and while I struggled to match his exact flavors, I used his recipes as a guide and gradually began earning compliments from our regulars. They would say, Sophia's cooking is delicious, it tastes just like your dad's. Encouraged by these words, I took on more responsibility at the restaurant, eager to ease my father's burden. However, my school attendance became a concern for my teachers, leading to a meeting with my parents where my lack of attendance was discussed. Despite their insistence on focusing on my studies, I made the decision to quit school. My parents were heartbroken, but their support never wavered. I completed the dropout process and began working full-time at the restaurant. As the years pass, I found myself managing most of the restaurant's operations alone from opening preparations to closing cleanup. My father's frequent hospitalizations and my mother's time spent with him at the hospital left me to shoulder the responsibility. One day, while handling the cut on my finger in the restaurant, a man entered, noticing my distress. Are you okay? he asked. I cut my finger while prepping. I replied. He handed me a band-aid and said, Here, take this. Thanks. That really helped, I responded. His name is Ted, my boyfriend, who is two years younger than me. We met through his job as a kitchen equipment salesman, and our relationship blossomed despite my initial doubts about why someone like him would be interested in me. Over time, those worries faded, and we are now preparing to celebrate our third anniversary. Ted proposed that we get married on our anniversary, and I joyfully accepted. Although I was anxious about leaving the restaurant, my parents reassured me, saying they wanted me to be happy. As our third anniversary approached, Ted and his mother visited our restaurant for the first time, marking the first meeting between our families. Ted's father had passed away early, so it was just his mother who joined us. When I informed my parents about the meeting, Ted's mother smiled warmly and said, I'm so glad we finally met. My son talks about you all the time. Actually, it's our daughter who has been singing your praises, my parents replied, smiling back. We're truly grateful to Ted, my mother added. Our daughter's only skill is cooking, but we hope you'll take good care of her. Ted suggested, let's put the formalities aside and enjoy the dinner. I began serving the dishes I had prepared in advance. Oh, how wonderful, they exclaimed. Ted is lucky to have a wife who cooks so well. Everything is delicious. Ted and his mother engaged in lively conversation with my parents, who were clearly pleased. Seeing everyone enjoy the meal I had prepared filled me with immense happiness. The first meeting between our families ended on a positive note, and Ted and I got married soon after. We didn't have a wedding ceremony due to Ted's busy schedule, but once we moved out of the restaurant and into our rented house, I finally felt like a true married couple. A few months into our marriage, Ted brought up a surprising suggestion. I'm concerned about my mother living alone, he said. I was taken aback. We have a spacious house here, I replied. Ted explained, I was thinking of inviting my mother to live with us starting next week. Considering her age, it would be safer for her to be with us in case of emergencies. Although I hadn't anticipated this proposal and it caught me off guard, I couldn't find a reason to object. Ultimately, I agreed. When we were house hunting, Ted was a dement about choosing a detached house. I had preferred a flat or condo, but I was persuaded by his argument that a larger space would be better. I wondered if Ted had always intended for us to live with his mother, which made me feel uneasy. But I pushed those thoughts aside. Our newlywed life felt fleeting, and soon, living with my mother-in-law became our reality. Ted, 
busy with work, was often away during the week and mostly went out on weekends. Despite his initial concern for his mother, I felt the impact of this new living arrangement settling in. I never saw Ted do anything to help his mother, and there was another issue. My mother-in-law had changed completely since we first met. While she initially enjoyed my cooking, she now refused to touch it. Eating food this flavorful will make me sick, she would say. You're not feeding my son this, are you? What were you thinking? I apologize, asking if the seasoning was too strong. Of course it was, she retorted. Your family's cooking might have been like this, but mine is much more refined and lightly seasoned. It's a pity my son has to eat this every day. Ted still claimed to enjoy my cooking, but his mother was persistently dissatisfied. Determined to please her, I started learning how to prepare healthier meals suitable for the elderly, using books and online resources. However, she criticized the new dishes as tasteless, poorly presented, and not nutritious enough. Whatever you cook seems unhealthy, she would say. It wasn't just the cooking. My mother-in-law would frequently use excuses like my back hurts or my legs hurt to avoid helping with household chores. To avoid conflict, I took on the chores myself, only to be met with sarcastic comments such as, you call this clean, it looks like a trash bin to me. And well, you did drop out of middle school so I guess it can't be helped. This situation dragged on for three months and I was at my breaking point. When I tried to discuss the issue with Ted, he dismissed my concerns, saying he was too exhausted from work. His company had recently undergone major layoffs, increasing his workload and often requiring him to work late. Despite this, I was determined to address the problem with my mother-in-law directly. Before Ted left for work, I asked if we could talk after work that night, outside the house, since my mother-in-law would be at home. I wasn't sure how a calm discussion was even possible, even Ted's complaints about being overwhelmed with work. Despite his exhaustion, I earnestly pleaded with him. Please, I'm begging you, I said, hoping to move him with my sincerity. Reluctantly, he agreed, though he emphasized it had to be a very brief meeting. We decided to meet at a cafe near his office at 8 o'clock p.m. to minimize my time spent alone with my mother-in-law at home. I prepared dinner in advance and left the house a bit early, avoiding any mention of my plans to her to prevent her snide remarks. Arriving early at the meeting spot, I wandered around the town, a rare treat since I usually confined myself to cooking and rarely explored the city alone. I found the walk refreshing. While browsing in a shopping mall, contemplating buying something for Ted, I was struck by a startling realization. My breath caught as I saw Ted walking with another woman. I rubbed my eyes, ducking my sight, but there was no mistake, it was definitely him. I watched as they left a store and driven by a mix of curiosity and dread, I followed them. They eventually retreated to a secluded area where they embraced each other. Their actions were unmistakable, this was an affair. Overwhelmed with shock and heart attack, I began to cry uncontrollably. Unable to bear the pain, I left the scene and messaged Ted saying that something urgent had come up and I couldn't meet him that night. My mind raced with questions. Why? Since when? Who was she? I felt nauseous, the image of what I had just witnessed replaying in my mind. Somehow, I made it back home, where my mother-in-law was waiting. Sophia, where have you been? It's not normal to leave without saying a word. Don't you have any common sense? You usually let us know before you go out, she scolded. I had no energy to argue and silently went to the kitchen where I saw the dinner I had prepared. I had prepared a special meal for Ted, but he barely touched it, which left me feeling regretful and brought me to tears once again. That night, I stayed locked in my room. Even when Ted came home, I couldn't bring myself to face him and chose to ignore him instead. Sophia, are you awake? Ted knocked on the door several times. Normally, I would have prepared a snack for him upon his return, but not tonight. He must have noticed the absence of the snack and expressed his concern. What's going on? I adjusted my work schedule to make time for our dinner. It's problematic to cancel like this, he said. How could he say he was waiting for me when he had clearly been spending time with another woman? My cancellation shouldn't have been a problem for him. It felt like he thought I was oblivious to everything. Ted began to complain to his mother, who had come to the front of the room. What's happening, Ted? It's late and noisy, she said. Mom, Sophia, and I had dinner plans, but she suddenly canceled and won't even talk to me now, Ted lamented, sounding like he was the wronged party. My mother-in-law joined in with her sarcastic remarks. Really, Sophia? You left without saying a word? 
neglected your duties, and are so irresponsible. I was looking forward to our dinner and even adjusted my work schedule for it. To think she would cancel on such an important commitment with her husband. If we had kids, imagine the trouble. As my mother-in-law unjustly criticized me, the thought of exposing Ted's affair flashed through my mind. But what Ted said next was even more shocking than the criticism I was receiving. There's no need to worry about that. Sophia can't have kids and she's already 30. I've given up on the idea of having children with her, Ted said, revealing my infertility, a secret I had only shared with him before we married. I had hoped to protect him from the hurt by asking him to keep it a secret, and he had promised to do so. Hearing it revealed like this was beyond belief. Oh, so Sophia can't have children. What a disappointment, Ted's mother said. Maybe I chose the wrong person. We've been deceived all along. She didn't want to lose the marriage to you because she thought she wouldn't find another opportunity. Unable to endure the pain any longer, I put on my headphones, cranked up the volume, and drowned out the world with music. That night, sleep eluded me as my mind replayed the images of Ted's infidelity and the harsh words I had heard. My heart felt like it was being ripped apart by sadness and anguish. Weeks later, Ted's relatives were coming over for a marriage celebration. I hadn't wanted any celebration, but it seemed my mother-in-law had taken it upon herself to organize one. She informed the relatives that I was a restaurant chef and handed me a list of dishes to prepare. Although there were many dishes to make, cooking itself was never a problem for me. In fact, it was my greatest joy. I decided to give it my all, pouring my heart into each dish. Immersing myself in cooking brought me relief from daily stress and reminded me of the warmth of my parents' kitchen. On the day of the gathering, about ten relatives arrived. Our living room wasn't very spacious, but everyone managed to find a spot. Wow, the food looks delicious. Did you prepare all of this? They marveled, savoring the dishes I had made. Their enjoyment brought tears of joy to my eyes. I'm so glad you enjoy my cooking. Thank you, I said, bowing in appreciation. Their heartfelt compliments made me feel appreciated, and I was overwhelmed with gratitude. Of course, it's delicious. We should be thanking you. Please make it again sometime, they responded warmly. However, just as I was basking in the praise, my mother-in-law interjected. It's not that great. The dishes are too rich and greasy for everyday use. They give me heartburn and will probably raise my blood pressure. Is she trying to kill me? The atmosphere soared immediately. Ted, engrossed in his phone, remained oblivious to the tension in the room. My mother-in-law continued her criticism. I've heard her family's restaurant is popular, but it's just in a small country town. The customers are low quality and the food is coarse. Besides, she didn't even finish high school, can't hold down a decent job, and can't have kids. She's a total disappointment as a daughter-in-law. The relatives looked on coldly. A woman close to my age whispered, I don't know how you put up with her. It's okay, this is the last time. I thought to myself, feeling a pang of sadness. With a forced smile, I whispered back, watch this, and then loudly announced, everyone, please take a look at this, as I held up my smartphone. The screen displayed a photo of Ted embracing his lover. The room's attention shifted immediately. What are you doing? Ted yelled, rushing towards me. What am I doing? Just revealing the truth, I replied loudly, facing Ted with a mix of anger and resolve. His face reddened, and he tried to deny it. I don't know what you're talking about. This is a lie. I would never do such a thing, Ted protested. His mother, initially trying to support him, was now speechless and stunned into silence. Determined to expose the full truth, I continued, Ted has been having an affair. I hired a detective agency and gathered substantial evidence. These photos are genuine. A detective agency. Evidence. Ted's mother stammered, her disbelief evident. Ignoring her, I firmly declared, as of today, we are getting a divorce. I will also be pursuing alimony for the mental distress I've endured. And to my mother-in-law, I have recorded all the harassment. I will also be seeking compensation from you, I declared firmly, causing both Ted and his mother to recoil in shock. They began to retort, trying to deflect responsibility. Hiring the detective is such a cowardly move, Ted's mother said sharply. You should be grateful you even got to marry Ted. That's right, Ted added. You're the one who forced Ted into this marriage and caused all this discomfort. It's your fault. Despite their protests, their words were meaningless to me. The evidence of the affair and harassment was irrefutable. It's a lie, right, Sophia? It's not too late for us to start over. 
that woman in the photo was just coming on to me, and I was merely bothered by it. It's a chance to set things straight, Ted tried to justify. Ted continued to spin excuses, but I was unmoved. Even if you were really being pursued, it doesn't change the fact of the affair, I said, maintaining my composure. One of the relatives who had earlier whispered support to me spoke up, Selfie, you did well. Her encouragement was comforting, and for the first time in a while, I felt a sense of relief and clarity. Our divorce was finalized smoothly. Ted's affair became known at his company, leading to his transfer from the head office to a different branch. He moved out of our home and relocated with his mother, likely closer to his new job. I received the alumni from Ted and his mother and decided to return to my parents' house for a while. My parents were initially surprised by the news of my divorce but welcomed me warmly without judgment. I contemplated whether to help out at the family restaurant or further my culinary studies. My father suggested, why don't you go abroad? It might be challenging, but gaining diverse experiences could be invaluable. The restaurant will be here for you when you return. Taking his advice, I used the alumni to fund a culinary journey abroad. I honed my skills under renowned chefs at a three-star restaurant and during this time met a French chef. We had a short courtship but quickly bonded over our shared passion for cooking. We married and became supportive partners in our culinary pursuits. After five years abroad, we returned to New York as promised. My parents had kept the restaurant thriving, and my husband began showcasing his culinary skills there as well. Our unique flavors and beautiful presentations attracted attention, making the restaurant even more vibrant and popular. Now, as we have taken over the restaurant for my parents, my husband and I live a fulfilling life together, dedicated to our craft. One day, I received a letter from my former mother-in-law. Her message was an unexpected apology. I too faced harsh criticism from my own mother-in-law regarding my cooking and housekeeping. I found your cooking truly delightful, and I admit I was envious. I took my frustrations out on you. Now, as I try to replicate your flavors in my own cooking, I realize how special your skills were. Though I doubt I'll ever match them, I hope you might taste my cooking someday. I am genuinely sorry. Her words touched me, and I felt the softening of my feelings towards her. I hoped that, someday, we could share a meal together with smiles. For that possibility, I was determined to keep improving my culinary skills.